good has come already. They've uh, increased their uh, publicity from Vietnam. There have been a few more names released, a uh, list of names that have come out. Uh, we feel that this is a direct response to the public pressure. Open talks on the subject in, in Paris, not really open, but more so than before. The Vietnamese have at least mentioned it. That's changed. During the time that you were in a North Vietnamese prison, did you ever think about there being possibly a raid such as uh, a raid such as was conducted recently in North Vietnam in a prison camp? I thought that it might be a possibility. I even thought about it before I was shot down when I was uh, in Vietnam. If there was any way that we could possibly get men out by uh, going in and uh, recapturing them, so to speak, uh, and bringing them out. The prisoners then look forward to something like that taking You've place? You've got to have something to hang on to, yes, hope. Uh, and that's all you have, is hope that somebody is concerned enough to risk their life to save yours.
1970 saw many changes in the Dallas County Sheriff's Office. 1971 promises not only to have changes, but to have many, many improvements to make the department the best in the nation. Some of those improvements are a full-time training program, not only for the new recruits, but also for the old hands. A pistol range will be added, police dogs, and the old jail will be reopened to house the female prisoners housed now here in the new county jail. If all goes well, according to the budget, there will be many improvements in the Dallas County Jail. This is Carl Mayo, Channel 8 News. I think it would be wiser to wait for redistricting to, until we have all the final census figures as nearly correct as, as they are going to be. Because if not, uh, we'll redistrict and still won't have the apportionment uh, proper as it should be. If, if that were to be the case, then we'd have to do it all over again. Dallas has grown considerably since the 1960 census, and there has been a population shift. Is there a chance we could wind up with 13 council members instead of 11? Yes, that's, uh, that's certainly a possibility. Uh, I've always thought that uh, if the council uh, uh, isn't composed of a large enough number of uh, members, uh, that the possibility exists that representation uh, might not be as accurate and uh, satisfactory as, as if it uh, clearly follows uh, the needs of increased and shifting population. Uh, it also has the advantage of uh, making available more members who can be assigned to useful work. Any money or valuable thing, or promised any public office or employment, or promised any public office or employment as a reward for the giving or withholding of votes. As a reward for the giving or withholding of a vote. At the election at which I was elected. At the election of which I was elected. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. I, George Richardson, do I, solemnly swear. I, George Richardson, do solemnly swear. That I will ex faithfully execute the duties of the Office of County Commissioner, Precinct 4 of Tarrant County, Texas. I, Robert L. Mabus, do solemnly swear. I, Robert L. Mabus, do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute the duties of the Office of County Commissioner, Precinct 2 of Tarrant County, Texas. That I will faithfully execute the duties of Office of County Commissioner, Precinct 2 of Tarrant County, Texas. And will, to the best of my ability, preserve. And will, to the best of my ability, preserve. Protect and defend the Constitution. Protect and defend the Constitution. And, you know, they talk about the Jesus freak, and it gives you an entree to discuss the person of Christ today that you could not discuss with young people 10 years ago on college campuses or off college campuses. Do you think then that with the, uh, with the resurgence <coughs> of religion and uh, belief or following of Jesus that the hippie culture is leaving us? Well, I don't know that the hippie culture all depends. That uh, admits to so many modifications of interpretation. To many people, if a kid has long hair, he's a hippie, which is not necessarily so. Uh, I think that we're never going to have a return to uh, the mode of living that the young people maintained, say, 10 years ago. Uh, but I do think that there is a revival taking place. In fact, I would say there's a moral dualism. You have, of course, an intensification of hardlined activism, but you also have more turned on young people for Christ than at any time that I can remember. In this country, New Year's Day has become to be regarded as a day set aside for recovery from hangovers and for the welcoming of a new year. However, to the millions of Catholics in the United States, it means something else entirely. I asked Monsignor W.J. McCuey, rector of St. Patrick's Cathedral in Fort Worth, what New Year's Day means to him. Well, of course, we celebrate the beginning of a new year with hope and joy and health to all, but primarily it was an ancient Jewish uh, feast that promoted it by reason of uh, celebrating the circumcision of Christ uh, when after eight days he was presented in the temple. In through the centuries we have retained that celebration of the circumcision and the presentation in the temple until 
Vatican II, where we now celebrate this uh, wondrous day as a commemoration of the solemnity of Mary, the Holy Mother of God. And by reason of this, we try to bring in the entire Holy Family, uh, the Christ's birth, the octave of his birth, his Holy Mother, and the uh, following Sunday we'll be celebrating the uh, Epiphany and uh, the Solemnity of St. Joseph later in the year. Does it distress you that religious holidays are becoming less and less religious and more and more commercial? Well, they are becoming more commercial, but I, I think uh, this year uh, the commercial area of the celebration was lessened and the spiritual was increased. Probably not one person in ten realizes that New Year's Day began as a religious observance and is still conducted as such in the Catholic Church. Probably not one person in fifty realizes that six days from now, the Feast of the Epiphany, a major milestone in the Catholic year. Are we the victims of the skepticism of a skeptical age, as was hinted at a century ago? Are we eventually going to allow to happen to Christmas and Easter, the same thing that's happened to New Year's, where it's a day of revelry without spiritualism, a day of commercialism without God? J. Lewis, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth.